Situated 400 miles off the coast of China in the Western Pacific, Lanyu Island is no stranger to bad weather. Typhoons and hurricanes are part of daily life. But the Yami developed an extraordinary solution to the bad weather. They took to building their homes underground. Uh, the grandpa, he said he used to see and try to understand each other because he doesn't speak uh, English and you guys doesn't speak our uh, language. So he tried to use the, our music to, you know, express him for... <laughs> to communicate. Yes, yes. And, uh, In a kind gesture of welcome, Shapan Gotan showed me some of his traditional ritual implements. Oh, it's protection too. Yeah. You finally have a rock and hit the head, so it's okay. Safe. Oh. But this is a special knife for the funeral. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh -huh. Using this. Oh, okay, so this is a hiding little knife, eh? He doesn't using this and he's using small. Oh, yeah, this is a batter, he said that. He's using this more small. Shapan Gotan and his wife are one of the last in the village to live in a traditional house. Most have taken the government grant and built solid concrete homes. I asked them why they have chosen to remain in their old style house. Oh, he's a. He's still prefer our traditional house. Are they cold in Yeah, my room is cold. Come to the shower. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They are very warm in there. Yeah, the yeah. Only yeah. the winter time. Yeah, winter time is fine. Mm -hmm. But the summer time, they move into here. They sleep in outside. Yeah. Only for winter time. Before we left, Shapan Gotan told me about the persecution his people had suffered. First from the Japanese when they occupied Taiwan before the Second World War, and then from the Kuomintang government. Both had attempted to wipe out the Aboriginal language and customs through the school system. Shona La told me that her island's culture is disappearing fast. There are so few opportunities on the island that most of the children leave for Taiwan as soon as they're old enough, and few ever come back. Life on Lanyu feels utterly different from either that of China or Taiwan. Christian missionaries have converted the majority of the 2,000 inhabitants, and every village has two churches, one Catholic and one Presbyterian. Each of these boats is said to have its own soul, which it absorbs from the main boat builder, in this case, Shapen Mate Nun, behind me here. There are two types of boats. This is the big 10-man boat used in spring during the flying fish season. And there's the other smaller two-man boat used by every family. It's every family's wish to be able to build their own boat, which they then decorate beautifully and use. And it's their hope that that boat will have a courageous soul and a bountiful heart. As with all seafaring people, their boats are of immense significance to the Yami. But increasingly, the fishermen say there are no fish to be caught, and most have given up altogether. Such has been the lack of respect of the Taiwanese authorities for the Yami people, that they chose this island as the location for a nuclear dump. The waste stored here will remain radioactive for 250,000 years. The authorities claim that it is safe, but its very presence has left young people like Shona La fearful about settling down here. She says that she'll leave and get married elsewhere. <laughs> For the future for Yami culture. Mm -hmm. 
Um, hindi ba kakapanta ha, mapukawan ang mga pinag. Hindi atis daw uh, uh, madam. No, hindi atis daw madam. Ah, yun niya no, yun adam, uh, ito ang danyang. He just say, when I die, probably, you know, our country getting lost or something. Mm -hmm. But still, have some people, they try to learn, but not so many, few people. Right. Yeah, so that's very sad. So he doesn't think we have futures. Okay. Yeah.